All right, well, we've done, uh, welcome to another part of my uh, World Cup preview series. Uh, in Group D, we've done Germany now. It's time to look at their first opponent in the group, Australia. The other teams in the group, of course, Ghana and uh, Serbia. Australia qualified uh, for the first time since 1974, last time around 2006. And uh, that really gave a huge boost to soccer in that uh, uh, country. Uh, of course, uh, Jose Hiddink was the coach back then, and uh, not only did they qualify for the first time in 30 years, they also made it to the second round and gave Italy a good run for their money, so they were very impressive um, under Hiddink. Looking at the team now, um, quite a few players uh, are still playing, that played then are still playing now. Um, yeah, unfortunately, there haven't been a lot of there hasn't been a lot of young talent coming through at all. Uh, it's a bit of an issue with Australia. I mean, look at that team. Um, we got Mark Schwartzer still in goal, Lucas Neal, Craig Moore, Luke Wilkshire, Tim Cahill, Brett Emerton, Vince Grella, uh, Mark Bersiano, Harry Kuehl. Now, these are exactly the players that were there four years ago, and they're still the players in the same squad. And they're getting a bit older. Uh, Kuehl being 31, Kale 30, uh, Emerton 31, Grella 30, you know. Um, Greg Morris 34, Lucas Neal 32, Mark Schwartzer 37. I mean, these guys are getting older, and um, you have to kind of wonder what that's going to be like in another four years. But, um, yeah, it did boost football. Uh, I mean, soccer, football, whatever, uh, in, in the country. And they managed to set up an A-League, so that might help develop football uh, in, in Australia. Of course, the A-League is the, yeah, the Australian uh, soccer league now that they're trying to push. And they've, uh, they've managed to get some uh, international players uh, to come back to Australia and play in the National League. Uh, like Craig Moore, like Jason Kalina have done now, who in the past worked uh, in Europe. Um, looking at the team, yeah, um, you know, they, they're solid like they were solid four years ago. Um, look at the qualifying, they, for the first time, they had to qualify from the Asian uh, region. Um, uh, but they did quite well, as you would have expected. I mean, Asian qualifying is relatively weak, and um, therefore they, they, they managed to make it, uh, not very surprisingly. And because of they left... Uh, the Oceanic region. Of course, New Zealand had a chance to qualify, um, so good for them. New Zealand uh, they also have a team, actually, uh, in the A-League, might even get a, se a second team in the, um, in the future, so this whole uh, A-League, Australian, uh, New Zealand League, might uh, grow into more popularity, and maybe that will help soccer in that region of the world. Um, they did well uh, in qualifying, and they're here again. Last time around, of course, they had this battle with Croatia that they narrowly managed to win, and they managed to get to the second round, which is a great performance for them. First time in the second round. But, um, yeah, this time around, the question is, can they do it again? They're, they're facing Serbia, uh, a similar team to Croatia four years ago, so it's it's... It'll be interesting. They're also facing Ghana, of course, an African team with a small, kind of a home continent advantage, and Germany. So, um, I think it's going to be very difficult for them to get through. Uh, like we said, they're playing largely with the same squad. Everybody's just gotten a bit older. Now, that could be a good thing in the sense that people have gotten more experienced, but it's a bit of a worry that there's no real talent coming through. And, of course, at Chus Hiddink, which was a great coach, um, who's done very well on every team, and they pushed him into the second round. He pushed him into the second round. Now, no more Hiddink. We have Pim Verbeek, another Dutch coach, who used to be coach of South Korea in 2006, <coughs> where he also took over from Hiddink. Um, I did okay there, uh, but I think this time around it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Looking at their recent games, you know, played New Zealand, won 2-1 goal in the 90th minute, the winning goal. 
lost against Denmark. I mean, won against Denmark, one nil. Close game, but against the USA, from what I've seen, they were uh, USA really outplayed them. They scored one goal out of a corner kick. Tim Cale scored. But other than that, uh, USA created a lot of chances. Scored three goals. Australia didn't look that great. So, you know, when I look at the um, team, first game against Germany, it's going to be really tough. Then against Ghana with home advantage. And then the last game against Serbia, similar team to Croatia. I mean, they narrowly made the second round last time around. It was very close. Uh, and I don't think they're going to be able to repeat that. But, uh, yeah, who knows? I mean, uh, we know from Australia that they really have a great team spirit. They're very professional. They work very hard. And they know they have to work very hard to get anywhere, so they're going to go for it. And Australia might surprise us. It's a close group. They may make it, uh, but I'll give you my final prediction on that uh, in the final prediction video for this group. Um, so, yeah, of course, the main player is Tim Cale. You know, he's the, the main guy from Everton, scores a lot of goals. And really, the rest, Harry Kuehl, the big name, yeah, I guess, uh, he plays for Galatasaray right now, but he's 31. And the rest is basically just solid players. Solid players that uh, that are decent. And uh, yeah, it's going to have to really come down to team spirit and working hard and giving it 200%. And then maybe they can get somewhere. But we'll see. Well, anyway, that's it for my analysis uh, of Australia. Thank you.